open field is certainly one with a wide mix of tour veterans and relative newcomers ready to make their mark on the sport of bowling. Welcome to the 2008 U.S. Women's Open. Hi, I'm Mo Burton, and let's look at the finalists. In bracket number four, Carolyn Doran Ballard is the feature player. Stephanie Nation features the players in the next bracket. Next week, we'll see Tennille Milligan try second U.S. Open. And today, we have a terrific field with Brenda Mack, Kim Terrell Kearney, DeAndre Beatty, and Maxine Nabel. With me is two-time U.S. Open champion Marshall Holman. And Marshall, you've been in this position before. What does it mean to a lady's career if she can win this tournament? It's simple. It means she's going to go down in history as one of the great players. There are only so many majors each year. These ladies won it very, very bad. I'm looking forward to your expertise comment. And now we go to Kathy Doran Lizzie in the VIP area. Well, this is the U.S. Open. The format was long and the conditions were challenging. And although a lot of our top players did not make the cut, it was a very diversified group that did. Each day, a different lady led the round. And although those top players didn't make the cut this year, I believe the most versatile players did. Today's look at the lanes is sponsored by the PBA Experience Leagues. Contact your local bowling center to see how you can bowl on the exact same oil condition used on the PBA's Denny Tour. We're, we're bowling on four lanes. We have two matches going at the same time. We have Terrell Kearney on the left bowling Mac, and Ask Beatty, who is the marquee player in this group, bowling Nabel from Australia. And Marshall, what is the key really to hitting this cheetah pattern, buddy? Well, you. The ladies are going to be playing the outside trajectory, and I really think keeping the ball going at the pins or a little left is going to be really helpful. Great shot from Terrell Kearney in her first shot on lane 39. Now will be a bowling alternate lanes. DeAndre S. B., the higher finisher among all four of these players, has decided to bowl on this right-hand pair, 41 and 42 here at Brunswick Zone XL lanes. First shot. She leaves the half ten, and she she was switching back and forth, bow to different different bowling balls, trying to get that not only be able to hit the pocket, but she needs to figure out a way to knock out the ten. Had a little bit of problem in practice, and uh, her opponent uh, Nagel looked really really sharp. Could be an upset in the making, but it's the first frame. Everybody's got to get their bowling legs underneath them. Cross lane, S. Beatty for the ten. She switches to a ball that doesn't hook as much, and it was a good thing, though, because she pulled that ball, but she had a little bit of room for error. That's a super, very smart professional way to go. Now Brenda Mack, who was first-team All-American at University of Nebraska, helped the Cornhuskers win the 1995 National Championship. Another product of the Bill Straub coaching up there. A former PBA players turned out some great titles and great champions. Here we go. Now, Mac, Mac actually sent the ball a little bit to the right, but she has the right combination with her roll and with the kind of equipment she's using, able to knock out the 10 pin. Okay, Maxine Nabel, she's from Sanctuary Point, Australia, and that's, uh, she tells me, just south of Sydney. So she's from way down under. First shot, right hand lane. Her opponent, S. Beatty, started with a spare. <laughs> And she really gets the ball down there fast. That one got a little bit right of her target. She's not real thrilled with that shot, but, you know, the first frame jitters, they're there for everyone, whether it's your first time on television or if you've been there for, you know, years and years and years. You can see this ball went just a tad right. It should start hooking now, but it starts a little bit late. Fortunate just to shake him around with nothing but the seven pin. She'll throw hard and straight at the seven. Okay, no problem. Solid first frame. Now we go to the left-hand pair. Brenda Max, strike up, can jump out to a little pressure lead over Kim Terrell Kearney. Both of those players are perfect. Mack, the only thing I think she has to fight, Marshall, is soft speed. She really has all the great technique, but if she gets a little soft, the ball run high on her. Now 
now looks like a 10 pin on that left hand lane and it for the most part it's going to be just a matter of getting the right combination to get both pocket and strikes ball comes in late to the pocket six pin lays in the channel doesn't quite knock out the 10 pin and uh, got to be a little bit disappointed it was a good shot just nine instead of ten stares down those pins before she gets ready to throw the ball. Great concentration. All these ladies are very, very experienced. Kind of the wild card, as you said, uh, Marshall is Maxine, who is up here on the left-hand lane, who really has thrown a good shot, too. So we haven't seen any wild shots. Nobody's got anything going, but that's not a bad way to start a match. Not at all. A little bit out of time on that shot. Leaves the two and the eight. This is a spare that can give you trouble, especially on synthetic lanes. We're going on synthetic lanes, brand new here at Brunswick Zone. And uh, I went down and looked at these lanes, Marshall. They're in perfect shape. You could eat dinner off these things. They're so perfect. So you can bet on a true roll across lane, but still the double wood is a tough shot, especially in the opening of a show. Sure. I'll stay at, this, at the restaurant and get my dinner the lanes. Oh, she hooks by leaving the eight pin and leaving a big, big opening. Well, we can see what with the short oil, 35 feet, and a lot of back end, a lot of finish, and uh, obviously going left of the eight pin, a big opening for her opponent. Now Kim Terrell can take a 10 pin lead and, and she could strike here on the right lane. And don't you agree the spares today are much more difficult because of the back ends than they used to be? Oh, I agree. Well, the experience of Kim Terrell, that ball was Trying to creep in a little bit high, but, high, but uh, Terrell Kearney able to take a 10-pin lead as Deandra Aspady gets up in the second frame. And, boy, you know when, Bo, when your opponent gives you the opportunity to really step up and take control of a match, you just got to do it. Well, this is the international woman bowler of the year. She knows how to, to grab the bull and by the horns and take advantage of it. Let's see what happens. It's still early, though. There's the friendly kick of the 10 pin. <laughs> you can see that ball roll down at 18.9 miles per hour, courtesy of our computer 80 tracking system. Watch the six pin in the channel and bang. Knocks it out and you know she likes that. Not only did her opponent give her opening, she gets a good break. Now, Kim Terrell Kearney. She's up, perfect through two, can take a 20 pin lead in just the third frame. Beautiful shot, in control, experience of Terrell Kearney right now is showing up early in this game. I had the opportunity of watching Deandra last year at the tournament in Panama City, and she really, she took control of that tournament and just ran through everyone. It was... Uh, Quite impressive. Yeah, if she gets loose, tough to stop. She can take a 23-pin lead here with a strike. We asked Deander what a U.S. Open title would mean to her career at this point. The U.S. Women's Open is one of the premier events that women have to bowl in. And to be able to win the U.S. Open would be a dream come true. It's um, some of the best bowlers in the world coming together and to compete in that field is an honor for me and to be able to win it or at least be in the hunt to win it is pretty special. All right, Deandra Asbady on lane 41 going for the spare. Barton straight, no problem, and retains the 13 pin lead. Brenda Mack, his husband is a great international player, Tim Mack. He's formerly a Penn State football player and star, played under Coach Joe Paterno. There he is, uh, still in quite great physical shape and a great international player in his own right. She locks it, and she should. All right. 
As we go to break, let's take a look at some of the past U.S. Open champions. The 2008 U.S. Women's Open is being brought to you by the United States Bowling Congress, the sport's governing body, growing the sport and protecting the integrity of the game. By Bowl.com, the USBC's official website and bowling's premier online destination. And by the Bowling Foundation, 67 million bowlers contributing through one voice. Thank you, Bowling Foundation. All right, and using our stroke motion, you can see Kim Terrell Kearney striking on lane 39. And then Deandra Asbady, she leaves the 10 pin. This is the first shot for each one of our ladies. Brenda Mack does a great strike in her opening shot. And Maxine Nabel comes in a little bit light, leaving just the seven pin. And that's our scroll motion, really giving us a good look at how these matches got started. While we were away, Deandra S. Beatty threw three strikes in frames four through six. Maxine Nabel needs a strong finish. Uh, looked like a good shot off her hand, but leaves us the temp. And, you know, I talked to her yesterday, and she said one of the keys for her was the fact that she hasn't been bowling very much lately. So she's really just enjoying herself, although it doesn't look like much fun now as we see this ball coming right into your living room down low. Look at the six pin. It doesn't jump out and get that 10. Well, the story so far has been who's been able to carry the 10 pin. Everybody's got a bunch of them. You just got to carry it and make it. Disaster there, Marsh. Well, that's, that's almost... Like handing it over on a silver platter right now, Bo. Here is a crucial shot if Brenda Mack is going to continue to our final match. She trails by 43, can put a little pressure on Terrell Kearney with a strike here, but it's almost must strike situation. Better speed. Still just came in just a little bit high. Actually, the speed 17 miles an hour. It looked a little faster off her hand to me. 17 doesn't seem like it's getting it done today. There's a lot of pin action here, and the balls and these lanes are really, really smooth. So once they start hooking, they hook a lot. And so that ball speed, as you said, Marshall, is of ultimate importance. Cross lane for the four. Now she makes the four pin, but she needs lots of help right now. The best she can do is shoot 204. Terrell Kearney right now working at a 227 pace. And the same can be said for the Asbady naval match. Well, Asbady hasn't missed the pocket either, so it doesn't look like she's going to give her an opening. You've got to start taking it with some strikes. By far her best shot, Mark. Maxine's got to be going to herself. Well, where's that been the whole game? That's, that's what I was doing in practice, and it, it can... <laughs> Gosh, it can leave you and come back in just an instant. Well, for Kim, she just has to maintain what she's doing. Very experienced player. Former U.S. Open champion. Won it in 2001. She has nine pro titles. This is uh, not a new experience for her. She's in great position right here. What a confident shot, Mark. Mr. Kearney certainly approved. You're right, Bo. Very confident delivery. Ball hooking back solid in the pocket, and every pin doing its damage. That's Mady up on the right-hand lane, 42, with a commanding lead. Just needs to fill frames. Will it go? No, the solid nine. Well, as our South American people say, when you leave a solid eight or nine, La Fatasma. Fantasma. And that... And uh, that means? That means the ghost pin. It was down, but it came back up. <laughs> I like it. They, anytime they leave a solid eight or nine, and uh, Clara Guillermo told me that, they call it a ghost pin. And she covers the ghost. Now, well, the ghost pin's not going to hurt as baby <laughs> right now. She just needs to keep making spares, and she'll be fine. 
And it looks like it's going to be Terrell Kearney and S. Beatty. Well, Kim can lock up the match with a strike here. A strike here, and uh, she is in the finals of this telecast. Whoa. That was a big mistake, the three, the six, the four, and the seven. You know, she's been able to get away with, with getting the ball a little left off her hand, but this time it got left, goes right through the heart, and leaves one of those reactive resin splits. Should she go for it at this point, Marshall? She's got a strike up. She's got a commanding 43-pin lead. Should she go for this split? It's makeable. And lose well, the pin count if she misses it all. Actually, I think I'd just try and get the two. Okay. She did. Made no attempt to get to the right of the three yeah. pin. Very yeah. smart tactic. She still needs just a mark to win. Espady, all she needs to do is keep filling frames, and she's in the driver's seat also. And Mabel can do no more than 205. Good shot. Good. working at a two team pace. In fact, with that strike there, she just need good count in the 10th frame. Boy, it's so easy to see from here when they get relaxed and throw a really comfortable, relaxed ball. We've seen Terrell throw them that way. We've seen S. Beatty. That was by far her most relaxed shot. Now, Brenda Mack absolutely must strike. Here's the situation. She must strike out and have Kim Terrell Kearney open in the 10th, and she could possibly win or even have a tie. But she must strike right here. Bang. All right, she knows she still has an outside chance. And, you know, getting back to what you were saying about, about throwing a relaxed shot, you can't take a basketball and force it into the hoop. You can't take a, a golf ball and make it go with velocity and, and make it go straight, forcing it. The same is true in bowling. Trust is a must. Your game is a bust, huh? Whaler said it. I believe it. What a saw by ball by Nabel. She has, and here's the scenario, an outside chance of winning this game against S. Beatty. And what would happen to have, S. Beatty would have to open and Nabel strike out and S. Beatty get a bad count, like an eight pin open. Now, not likely, but it's, it's both games are still up in the air to a very small extent. Mandatory strike right here. This is the lane that's been hurting her. Still in it. Finally got a break on that lane. Came in a little bit light. Made the adjustment. Must have moved a little bit left on the approach. Trying to get a little more oil to carry the ball down. Head pin goes to the sideboard. And the pins dance. And boy, she wanted that one. She knows she's still got an outside chance. Force your opponent to show up in the 10th frame. Good point. Must strike on this ball to have any chance. And if I'm Kim Terrell Kearney, I just assume she didn't strike here. <laughs> I agree. Got a hurry. Oh. Well, she did everything she could late in the game. Terrell Kearney will win the match between Brenda Mack and herself. Obviously, this is match play competition. All you have to do is beat your opponent to move on to the finals. So we already have one finalist. It's going to be Kim Terrell Kearney. Now the second finalist will be determined on lane 41 and 2. We still have the jury out on Deandre Beatty, Maxine Noble. Maxine is up in the 10th. Absolutely must strike. If she does not strike, we already will have our two finalists. But she's still in it. She can strike here. Look at that power. I suppose you could say Nabel is able. <laughs> You've been waiting to do that. What does that takes out the 10-pin, Marshall? You know, you couldn't do that with the old heavier pins or whatnot, but with today's power balls. That's the head pin. Watch it go to the sideboard and bang. Wow. Dancing and doing some damage. Nabel has given herself a chance to win. She must strike here, must strike on the next ball, and then have S. Beatty have a disastrous 10th frame. Here we go. Again? 
Instant replay, Bo. Wow. Can I borrow some of that power? Boy, she's got to be feeling that. A little bit vindicated, though, because she started so poorly, and that's really a yeah. lack of experience. So watch that head pin. Go to the sideboard. It's going to bounce right back in, and does Mabel like it? <laughs> Why not? Okay, she must still concentrate. A strike here will force the Andres B to get a full nine count in the 10th frame. How about three times? You might as well do it three times. <laughs> What a great finish. Got a smile to her face. Let's take a look at that one one more time. A little bit different as the head pin does the damage. It sort of rolls over quickly. Espady up 10th frame needs nine pins on two balls. She has a strike up. Nine pins on two balls to advance the bowl. Kim Ter Terrell Kearney in the final. Here we go. It sounds easy. And it was. <laughs> great shot and a great smile. That's a winner. Just the final score to be determined. We will be back right after this with the match. And the final score of our match number one, Deandra Beatty, 227 over Maxine Nabel, 205. And Kim Terrell Kearney, 212 over Brenda Mack, 190. And I'm with our two winners, Deandra and Kim. Kim, you were going to start with an even rolling ball, and you went with a, a ball that gives you more length and flip the, uh, the uh, clash. Why'd you make that choice? Well, I think when I got back over to that pair, they were a little bit different. The fronts had burned up a little bit, so I needed something to scoot down the lane a little bit easier for me, and the clash gave me that look. Well, you definitely made the right choice. Deandra, you obviously bowled a great, confident game, and yet it still came down to the 10th frame. What were you thinking? Just make a good shot. I did a really good job of just staying within myself and really not looking back and not looking ahead, just staying in the moment. Well, congratulations. Coming up next, Deandra Asbady takes on Kim Terrell Kearney. Welcome back to the U.S. Women's Open, a USBC event from Brunswick, Zone XL, in Romeoville, Illinois. Let's look at the keys to success. The keys to success are sponsored by USBC Coaching. To ensure, ensure continued success in your game, locate a certified coach in your area by using the Find a Coach feature on Boeing's official website. And Marshall, can you take us through that final shot by De Deandra that locked up the match? Well, the key to success for Deandra Asbady is just to let that talent take her through. You can see this is the, the shot she threw in the 10th frame. Stroh motioned all the way down the lane. High flush, 10 in the pit, and this is the pair that she bowled on. They're bowling on the same pair for this for this final match that she bowled on earlier, so advantage as Beatty for Terrell Kearney. She needs to make sure she keeps her speed up. She has a tendency to sometimes get a little slow. And joining us in the announce booth during the first portion of this game is one of the great players from last year's U.S. Open, Shannon O'Keefe. Welcome aboard, Shannon. Well, thank you for having me. Okay, first shot, Deandra Asbady. Let's see who uh, advances to the final four. Almost a 7-10, seven, 7 just falling out. Shannon, you bowl with Deandra a whole bunch as we're going to have to have a re-rack here because the 10-pin got knocked over, Marshall, so the 10's going to be set up. But speaking of Deandra, Deandra, you bowled with, uh, uh, Shannon, you bowled with Deandra a ton last year, and what is her really best shot from the side? She's really, really good at, at going a little bit left to right. Um, she's just really strong at staying down and through her shot. As long as she gets through her shot and doesn't cut it off short, uh, she's pretty solid. What was your key last year? You bowled probably the greatest game a woman has ever bowled on a big national scale. There's been some 300s, but you shot 299 in the semifinals of the U.S. Open last year. Were you playing this type of shot on this type of condition? Most definitely, yeah. The biggest key for me was getting a ball in my hand that rolled early enough. Um, yeah, there you go. It's <laughs> my scary face. <laughs> um, yeah, I was getting a ball in my hand that rolled early enough to control the back end. That was the key for me in getting it through the midway. It was, it was fun. It was fun for you. The yeah. opponent didn't enjoy it too much. <laughs> oh, that's okay. It was Stephanie. She's my buddy. <laughs> 299. That was a 10th that didn't quite fall, but uh, that was a lot of fun for us as well. 
Okay, we're getting organized here right now. DeAndre asked Beatty after a little delay. Um, Shannon, uh, she's a pretty good spare shooter anyway, isn't she? Yeah, I don't see her miss very much. Uh, I don't think she'll have a problem tracking this one down. She change balls for uh, spare ball usually? Yes, yeah, she does. Okay. Has to keep her composure through that little bit of a delay. I know I wouldn't have liked that back in my day. No problem for us, Beatty. She makes the spare. These ladies have a lot more patience than, than I ever had. And, uh, I wish I could have had a little of that back in the day, but that was a long time ago, Bo. Well, you're maturing, Marshall, at the age of 50 plus. <laughs> All right, now we have Kim Terrell Kearney, who was just really solid in their first match, kept every ball except one around the pocket, opening shot. Oh. Uh, she leaves the solid, smashing 7-10. Ball hits the pocket nicely. Well, once again, we have a slight malfunction. She's going to have the 7-10 reset. And what happens is you watch this replay. The ball, as Del Ballard always tells me, stands up. In other words, what it does for the people at home, it loses its spin and starts rolling out, kind of like a water wave flattening out. And when it does that, it goes through the pin straight, and the 5 does not take out the, the uh, 7, and the 6 obviously doesn't take out the 10. And my opinion is for that is to spin it more or throw it harder or get a different ball, Marshall. What do you think? Uh, but I, th I think in today's game, getting getting the different ball that could possibly be the, the right kind of right kind of move. And I believe that, that Kim did change pieces of equipment for this game different than what she used the last game. In any case, it's a terrible break. It was a good shot. She uh, she knows how to win. Former 2001 U.S. Open champion, nine pro titles, and an All-American at San Jose State. Don't count her out. Second frame. Yeah, I just don't think that the ball is uh, reading the lane right. Looks like it's a little too skate flippy, like it's not picking up the mid lane enough. Well, let's go down to Kathy Doran Lizzie to report on what's some action. Well, as I asked her in her interview, she was actually going to start the match with an earlier rolling ball that was smoother. At the end of practice, she went to the clash, which is more lengthy and flippy. Now, as you can see, if she misses a little left, it's going to jerk and go through the face. So I think she might make another change. Good point, Kathy. Thank you very much. She's going on on the pair for the first time as Beatty is shooting her second game. So it really is a it's a very, very big advantage to have that top seed and be able to choose where you bowl your next game. Why, why would there be such a difference, Shannon, in two pairs of lanes when they're synthetic lanes installed at the same time? Why, would, would, for the people at home, would there be such a difference? A lot of the difference is that you have um, an entire game bowled by different opponents on these pairs before the final match has even taken place. So, and all the practice on top of that. Uh, all these players attack the lanes, the full players all attack the lanes all a little differently and so they do break down differently over the course of the 30 minutes of practice. Good point. It's a good adjustment for fans at home is once again we have a malfunction and uh, once again Deandra is going to have to uh, wait a second to shoot the 10 pin and with that being said uh, Shannon you've bowled so much with her does Deandra like to throw the ball hard or straight or hook it or what what is her best game or you think she's versatile enough to win with any kind of shot almost Deandra's extremely versatile she uh, she impresses me she works hard um, on her game um, with learning everything she can and watching her at the World Championships last year, I mean, when the shot demanded her to play out, she played out. When the shot demanded her to play left, she played left. She actually won the uh, Women's World Championship Masters last year, where you bowl one game on the short pair, one game on the left pair, and she ended up coming out victorious. That's great experience and great versatility. Now, for a second consecutive 10-pin to take a 10-pin lead second frame. Husband John, uh, a very congenial young man, and there's many, uh, one of her, Kim's, uh, Deandra's best friends, Miss Swager, who is in a good bowler in her own right, uh, right next to her husband. She's uh, also bowled well in the tournament. Now, third frame, Deandra up on the left-hand lane. She's had two balls in the pocket, two 10 pins, leads by 10 against former U.S. Open champion Kim Terrell Kearney. 
Looked like a much better, smoother release off her hand. I like which, when she throws the strike, she gives herself a little bit of a fog. <laughs> I like that's, that's very cute. That's good. I like it. I used to do that, but it was it was it was a little more violent. <laughs> like yes. I don't remember that. You were way too young. <laughs> Okay, third frame. Boy, I'll tell you, you know, you get a 7-10 to start the game out, then you make an adjustment and you go to the 4-9. It's, it's almost like she's thinking she's got to really hit this perfectly flush in the pocket. This ball's going to travel up just a little bit high. You'd think it'd just be a 4-pin, but no, she gets the double disaster. This can be made. She needs to slide the 4 into the 9, but certainly a very difficult split. Odds for this, Marshall, uh, when I kept him on the Pro Bowlers Tour, were 9-2. to two. So you make it uh, just two times out of nine attempts. Let's see what happens. Well, you made it two times out of nine attempts, Bo. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have enough ball to leave the 4-9. Uh, I made you? it once every month. <laughs> well, Kim's going to settle down here. Espady has not put a lot of pressure on her with only a single strike, and there's plenty of room left in a match. Many a match has been won, especially in a, an event like this, the U.S. Women's Open, under a lot of pressure, when you just start throwing a bunch of strikes and all of a sudden the other player kind of gets lost. So let's see what happens. She switched balls, and now she's going to start over. Something must have distracted her. Kim, who is a coach at Delaware State University in the NCAA Division I program, so is not doing a lot of professional bowling, but has tons of experience. It's more length on that ball. It's a great shot. Actually, what that ball did is it looks like it's got more length. Well, what it's doing, it's reading the mid lane a little bit earlier, so it's smoothing out the back end reaction. It's not so sharp and violent off the back. That's why we have you here. Thank you very much. <laughs> We're going to go to Kathy, Dora, and Lizzie for a report. Well, Kim made the ball change that I thought she would. Uh, she went from the ball that was length and flip, which was the clash, to a game breaker. Earlier rolling, stronger, with a little shine on it, smoothed out her reaction. Great choice. You know what, Shannon? I actually think Gander was happy with that shot off her hand, and it just sailed. I mean, she was going for the throat right there early in the match and uh, left the two pin. Yeah, a lot of it could be, too, that ball that Kim was using. Um, may have pushed some some oil down the lane and tightened up that spot off. Well, you have to be aware Great of every point. shot. You know what, Marsh? I mean, right. these lanes change fast. Really fast, and we noticed that all week long throughout the tournament. We had a 186 players start this tournament. We're down... To the first semifinal finals, if you say to be, one of these players will bowl in our final match in the uh, on, the, on the last weekend. And the field average, Marshall, for 186 players turned out to be 187.63. So the scoring was not real high. It's a demanding condition, and as rightfully so, it should be in the U.S. Open. Absolutely, there, but there were there were a lot of bowlers here who, who were here bowling for much for his fun as for a chance to win this event. As Beatty leaves another 10 pin and, and there's the transition, it just continues and they have to figure out a way to get the ball to enter that pocket properly to knock all the pins down. This ball is going to just lay a little bit toward the end, doesn't continue, six pin gets stuck on the channel and she's got to practice another 10 pin, which she's been good at. She hasn't missed a 10 pin in over a year, I don't think. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's what that she told me. <laughs> I, I, I'll bet she hasn't missed many in a year, and yeah. she does a lot of bowling. Yes, she does. Well, it's time for Kim Terrell Kearney to really start strapping that ball more. And she has the opportunity to be only two pins down if she can strike in the fifth and sixth frame. So even with the horrendous start, she's still got the chance to get right back into this game. Good point. <laughs> Oh, and she made a great ball change and made a great shot. Six pin's going to just fly over the top of the ten pin. Yeah, that was a great shot. There were so many corner pins left this week. I think there was more corner pins left this week between the seven and the ten for everybody out here playing than I've seen in a really long time. Beautiful form by Terrell. And look at that six pin pop right over the top, just like Shannon was saying. 
very, very frustrating to make a great shot like that and come up with just a 10 pin. No problem there, but it's early in the match. Uh, very personal, Kim Terrell, Kearney, uh, reacting to a kind of a poor break. But Shannon, going back to the point you made before, the lanes, as I observed from Reno to here, the last year's U.S. Open, se seemed a pretty, pretty good. But you know what? The, the corners, they hang it up more than they did last year. Definitely, absolutely more than I remember. It was a frustrating week for myself and many opponents, our competitors. Okay, let's see what Kim can do here in the sixth. All right, a great shot by Kim Terrell Tierney, uh, Shannon O'Keefe, thank you very much. And now let's take it some former U.S. Open champions. The 2009 USBC Open Championships promised to be one of the best ever, with over 15,000 teams already entered for the event at the Cashman Center in Las Vegas. Now is the time to get in your entries. For more information on registering and tourney information, go to Bowling's official website, bowl.com. We're back with DeAndre Asbady halfway through the final quarterfinal match, uh, leading by 22 pins. And Marshall Holman is going to bring us some technology bowling. As we can see with the throw motion with Kim, she's going to be blue, and DeAndre is the red ball. You see him going down together. The red ball of DeAndre goes out a little bit further to the right. Now they're just about the same. They're both going to strike. That was Kim in the third frame and DeAndre in the fourth. And we'll take a look at the Cats' ball speed comparison. You can see DeAndra's ball speed pretty consistent from 18.4 to 18.7. And Kim throws the ball a little bit slower. As I was saying earlier, she's got to be careful about that slower ball speed. DeAndra up six frame, leads by 22 pins. The winner of this match will go to our finals in a couple weeks to vote for the championship. <laughs> And she leaves the bucket, two, four, five, eight, and Bo, that is no bargain to try and spare. You know, all day long we've watched her bowl, and she's been around the pocket with relatively easy spares, Marshall. Let's see how she handles this. This is a, a real bugaboo for anybody. You can chop it, you can go across lane, and I'm sure she didn't practice this in, in her opening practice, so could be, be a pivotal shot right here. Interesting to see if she goes hard and straight at it or tries to use the ball that hooks. I think she'll, I think she'll throw pretty much just at it. No, she's hooking at it. That's why she's down there and I'm up here. <laughs> she made it. it. She didn't make a textbook, but she does not care in the least. All right. Watch Look the two pin. Got a great break. Hit the four, took out the eight, Marshall. Yeah, that's a that's, that's a very big relief for Asbady. Coming down the home stretch, four frames left to determine this week's winner. S. Beatty leads by 18. Just the 10 pin. Looks like she needs to get the ball rolling a little bit sooner in the, in the front end. Maybe move, move a little bit to the right, be a little more direct. We'll see S. Beatty on this particular delivery bow. Ball looks good there, but it's just laboring. It's not It's not finishing its roll. I agree. It's going down instead of 35 feet. It's going down 45 feet before it makes its break. But she's been dead eye on the end. All right. DeAndre S. Beatty is just chugging along. She's given him Terrell Kearney an opportunity to, as we see in the seventh frame with a double, to cut the lead of S. Beatty to just seven pins. Strike working. And she made a great shot last time with this lane bow, left the 10 pin. She's been striking on lane 41. She needs to strike right here, and she's right back into this match. Little help, a little help for Terrell. Terrell turning now down by only seven pins, and that ball rolled 17-9. That was the fastest ball she's thrown. 
With so many past members and present members of the Team USA, as we see this ripping shot, taking out the head pin. She reacts. Well, she loved it. And you know her husband loved it as well. That was a great shot, a great break. And, you know, Terrell Kearney was kind of due a good break. She hadn't really had much going her way this game, but has a chance in the eighth frame to take the lead. Well, we've you know, seen a lot of that. Marshall, we expected in the warm-ups uh, to see some really big scores. Uh, we found that they've always scored well on this cheetah pattern and uh, not to be. And I, I think he hit the nail on the head, and Shannon did too. The oil is being pushed down in this bowling center, and there's more corner pins than ever, and yet the pins are very bouncy. So when you hit solid, you might leave a solid 10. When you hit light, um, you're not kicking out the 10. So that's been the key pin for sure. There's no doubt. what the ladies are bowling for. First place, 25,000. Second, 15, down to the top 16, all cash for $4,000. These ladies are definitely in the hunt for the 25,000. Just two frames left, eight pins separating them. Yes, Beatty up on the right-hand lane, spare up. She left the 2458 last time, Bo, so she'll have to make an adjustment. Is she going to move further right and go straighter? Looks good. No, it looks great. <laughs> Husband approves of that one. That's the way my wife bowls. You know, Marshall, I'll give Deanna credit. I mean, not only is the experience in uh, the Women Player of the Year last year, but she, she's hard to read in match plays. You know, when you bowl on somebody, you look them in the eye, Deandra has this, like, well, I just had this completely figured out. I'm not going to miss. She actually makes the opponent a little squeamish back there, thinking she's never going to miss. So now we come down to the key foundation ninth frame. It's anybody's match. Hespady leads by eight, can make it 18 pins if she strikes. Now she was distracted. There was some noise in the back. If I was her, I would take the ball, put it down, and start all over again. She, that wasn't what she chose to do. Always important to keep a routine. Oh, you are so right, Marshall, on a well, pivotal shot. She leaves the one, two, ten washout. Yeah, it just looked like she got a little bit out of her rhythm. You can see that ball got down early. Bad leverage. Never gets to the pocket. Leaves the one, two, and the ten. Now you can see by our cat system that that ball went significantly right of the target she had been hitting. Needs to get the ball left of the head pin. Knock the head pin into the ten. It can be made. She's a great spare shooter. And the ultimate bad break. She wraps the head pin around the 10. Boy, sitting on the bench, Terrell Kearney gets the break she was looking for. Watch this, right around. And you were saying in years past, Bo, the, if you got the head pin over on a washout, you always made it, but the pins are so much more lively now. Yes, the, I'm talking wood pins, Marshall, and we haven't seen wood pins in 50 years. Now, Kim Terrell, with the gift of an open frame, can take this match right now with two strikes. the first one. Boy, and after such a tough start, but she hangs in there. She doesn't doesn't allow herself to get mentally down, as her husband certainly approves of that. It's going right to the 10th frame. The scoreboard tells the story as Del Ballard shows it to me. S. Beatty going at a 181 pace, Terrell at a 185 pace. The situation is simply this. If Kim Terrell Kearney can strike and get seven spare, she'll end up with 192 and shut out S. Beatty. Anything less DeAndre Spady will determine her own destiny. Here we go, 10th frame. That's it. What a great comeback. Way to hang in there. And it's got to be very disheartening for DeAndre Spady. But uh, Terrell Kearney just, she bided her time and was she able to get a break and then take it out. Still needs a count. Needs seven spare in it to end up with 192. Any less than that, she can win, she can lose, or get tied. 
it'll all be up to ask Beatty. You're she right, Bo. I, I got a little ahead of myself. She does need to get nine pins right now to shout out ask Beatty. Or eight, seven, or spare. eight, seven, spare. Here we go. That's a winner. Kim Terrell Turney will be in our final four group for the U.S. Open Championship. We'll be back after this. The 2008 U.S. Women's Open has been brought to you by the United States Bowling Congress, the sport's governing body, growing the sport and protecting the integrity of the game. By USBC Coaching, where bowling success begins, find a coach in your area by using Find a Coach feature on bowl.com and by the United States Bowling Congress National Tournaments. No matter what your age or average, there's a USBC National Tournament for you. Go to bowl.com for a complete list of opportunities. Kim Terrell Kearney defeats DeAndras Beatty in a little bit of an upset 194-191 to move into the final round, the final four, and Marshall, you have the shot of the show. That's right, Bowen. In recognition of Kim Terrell Kearney's shot, $1,000 will be donated to the USBCU Scholarship Fund. And with Kim Terrell Kearney, Kathy Gore and Lizzie. Great game. Even though you had the two bad breaks early on, the two splits, do you think the ball change was what did it for you? Yeah, I probably, if I hadn't split on those first two shots, I'm sure I would have probably stuck with the clash because I had a good look with it earlier. So um, it was kind of destined, I guess. So it's a good thing. Congratulations. Good luck. Back to you guys. Thanks, Kathy. Terrell Kearney defeats F. Spady 194-191 to capture the first spot in the 2008 Women's U.S. Open Championship semifinal round. Be sure to join us next Sunday to see who grabs the second spot. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For my broadcast partners, Marshall Holman and Kathy Doran Lizzie, this is Bo Burton saying so long from Brunswick Zone XL Lanes in Romeoville, Illinois.